Shabbat Shalom. There was a, a study done um, probably 20 years ago at this point, but uh, I remember reading about it in the Times where uh, sociologists gave a packet of questions about a, a person. It was about children, actually, about 100 questions about a kid. What's their favorite this? What's their favorite that? What would they do if someone pushed them? What would they do if someone offered them a snack? What would they just sort of general questions about a kid? And the researchers gave this packet of 100 questions to the child's parents. They gave them to the child's teachers, to their camp counselors, to their friends, to uh, right, just a wide array, a 360 sort of view of people in their lives. And the results of this sort of study came back that the answers given by the teachers, by parents, by friends, by camp, by uh, camp counselors, et cetera, right, were all, of course, different. Right, exactly. And the, the point of this study was not how duplicitous are little kids, right? The point was that we all, uh, you know, act slightly different when we're at school or when we're at college or when we're with our camp friends or when we're with our regular friends or when with our, our aunts and uncles or with our parents. We, all, we show different parts of ourselves. And if this was true 20 years ago, it's double and triply true today. Right? We, there are plenty of places in our lives and in our world where we have to or do sort of bifurcate ourselves. Right? Think about, I don't know, online versus not online and who we are. Right? Where, who we are at work versus who we are at home. Who we are with our friends from 35 years ago. Who we are with the new friends we just made. Right? We tend to be somewhat different in the way that we approach people. We're not sure if we can share all of the selves of who we are in any given encounter. Here's your too much information story from the rabbi. I was once on a first date where I mentioned Star Trek and Dune in the conversation over dinner, and I thought, this is either going to go great or terribly. Uh, and there was, there was not a second date. Uh, because we have to, <laughs> as a weird one, I don't know why you didn't stop me from telling that story, Aaron. Okay. <laughs> But the point is, right, we have to think about what we share of ourselves and when and how. And in the Torah that we read today, we see a fascinating example of specifically that. Because the Torah that we read has, as we sort of spoke about this morning, right, there are the spies who are sent out to scout the land, and 12 spies go out, they all come back. What happens? Ten of them say... It's terrible. It's a horrible place. We can't do it. You know, oh my gosh, don't even try. Two of them say, we can do it, right? Sounds good. One of them's Joshua. We know a lot about Joshua. We read about Joshua. He's been picked by Moses to be the, the successor. He's a military leader, right? Joshua's Joshua. Caleb, the other of the two who bring back a favorable report, somewhat less well known. And in the verses that we read today, God says of Caleb that I gave him ruach acheret. Or, sorry, he had. He possessed a ruach acheret. He possessed a different spirit. And so he followed me and he did it. And he said it was okay and we can go ahead and do it. And the question of what this ruach acheret is, what does it mean that Caleb had a different spirit sends all of our commentaries off thinking about what this might be, right? So the easiest example, right, Ibn Ezra says, Ruach HaKhera means mina miraglim, right? The, 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 he had a different spirit than the other spies, right? The ten that came back and said, we can't do it. Two came back and said, we did, because Caleb had a different kind of spirit, right? They looked at the giants and said that the glass is half empty, and Caleb looked at the giants and said that the glass is half full, right? We can do it. You know, Shabbat Shalom, he was an optimist, okay? Other commentaries say something else. Rashi, perhaps maybe the most radically, says, no, 
he actually had shte ruchot. He had two different souls. Said Caleb, ruach bapeh, ruach bekirbo. That he had the spirit that was in his mouth that he said, and the ruach that was in his heart that he really believed. And Rashi cooks up this whole experience where basically, as the spies are coming back from the land, and they're all like, oh gosh, this is terrible. We're not going to be able to do it. Okay, we all got our story straight. We're going to say it's terrible. We can't go in. And Caleb is apparently, but Peh in his mouth saying, of course, guys, we can't do it. No, no, no. It's terrible. Yeah, you're right. But in his heart, he knows that they can. He has the second soul, and the second spirit gives him the courage and power to have pretend like he's going to go along with the spies, but in the end, he stands up and says what he believes, actually, we can do it. Actually, we can go forward and go ahead with it. Another commentary creates another image for us and says that the Ruach Acheret is not a completely separate soul, but a new kind of soul. And what he says, he quotes a Midrash, this Orachaim quotes a Midrash and says that Caleb, again, just like all the other spies, went in and saw it's going to be a hard conquest of this land. It's really going to be bad. He, like all the other spies, was quaking, was shaking, was scared, was nervous, thought they couldn't do it. But Caleb, according to the Midrash and Orachaim, goes to the graves of Avraham and, and Sarah and goes to Mar Machpelah, and in that place, he recharges his spiritual batteries. He gets this Ruach Acheret, a new soul, because he spent time thinking about the ancestors, and they went through trials, and they came out okay, and so if we have faith, then we can go through trials, and we can come out okay as well. Three different ideas based on these two random words that we get, right? That lead to, I think, something for all of us today. Because we live in a world where a lot is happening, to say the least. This week, there's a lot going on. Right? There's in, in our world, in Israel, in this community, in the country, there's a lot. And there's a lot that we might look at and say, it's too much, we can't do it. And there might be times where we're sitting or standing or in a group of people thinking a different thing than the other people around us are thinking. And the story of Caleb comes to teach us a few things. One, first of all, that's okay. Right? It's okay to believe something in your heart different than what the people around us are saying. That's where we get our name Hebrew, right? That Avram is called Ivri because he stood on one side of the world and the whole world stood on the other side. Right? That what it means to be a Jew is to hold that and say, yeah, okay, I have the things that we're all talking about, but in my heart of hearts, I know in my Ruach HaCheret that something's wrong or that something's right. I know it to be true. Caleb also teaches us that there's times where our soul can feel a little beaten down. And we need to go find a way, whether it's the kever avot, the graves of our ancestors, whether it's talking to friends, whether it's reading things, whatever it is, find ways to recharge our spirit so that we can come back with a ruach acheret, with a new one, a new spirit, a new soul, so that we can face the world around us. And our tradition is full of these moments where we feel bifurcated in who we are. And some in the Talmud right, that Gamliel famously used to post a guard outside, famously means I heard it once before, guys. Okay. Famously used to post a guard outside of the Beit Midrash, and he wouldn't let anyone in whose insides weren't like their outsides. He kept anyone who he felt wasn't a whole person out of the Beit Midrash. And it isn't until this crazy story where he gets deposed and Rabbi Yeshua lets everybody in and he thinks, oh my God, I was keeping Torah from all of these people, right? That we realize that you can't set that barrier for everyone because by necessity, sometimes our insides and our outsides don't entirely match. And there's stories that come through us in the modern times. There's the maid of Ludmir, a, a, a famous uh, female uh, rabbi, or not rabbi, depending, who um, had, was told that she felt 
that, or she wrote that she felt like she had a ruach acheret. She had a different kind of soul because she was a woman living in a world where women weren't supposed to give halachic rulings and learn, and she did, and she felt like she wrote that she had the soul of a man, that she had a different kind of of soul, and her different kind of soul led her community, right, and was a, she was a great thinker and writer and leader of our people because of that different soul. And so we learn from this that there are times where our spirit inside might not feel like our spirit outside. There are times where we feel like our soul demands a different thing from everyone else around us, and there are times where our spirit might feel like it's weakening, and we need to find a way to recharge it. We're entering now into, hopefully, a little bit of a lull in the summer months. And it's time for us to start some of the cheshbon and nefesh that will lead us into the high holiday season and think about where our soul is right now. Are we in need of recharge? Are we in need of investigating how we feel different than the people around us? Are we in need of taking that difference and using it as a blessing for others? Because the story of Caleb also reminds us that while he has this Ruach HaCheret that is different from the others, and that's okay, his redemption and the redemption of our people come when he's able to voice it to everyone else. And he's able to speak the Ruach that's Bikirbo, that's inside of him, as well as the Ruach on the outside. So may we merit over this summer to find the moments to recharge, to find the moments to investigate our spirit and how we feel about the world around us, about the community around us, about ourselves. And then may we find the redemption of bringing that Ruach HaCheret into the other, this world and sharing the blessings of our difference and sharing the feelings that we have with the community that wants to hear them. Shabbat Shalom.